I'm going to go ahead and close this now. And I'm going to show you another method for doing this. Okay, so another tool that we have to extract the existing slopes from a corridor such as I have here, we have a tool that's called cross-section report. And this tool will go ahead and analyze your model after you place some main boundaries at a user-defined interval, and it'll create a, a report for you that will list the cross slopes, the offsets, as well as the elevations between your template points. So let's take a look at how this one works. So the first thing you need for this to work is you need to place some cross-section name boundaries at a user-defined interval. So I'm gonna go up to my drawing production tab here. We'll go over to place name boundary, And we will set the cross-section mode, or select the civil cross-section mode. We'll set the drawing seed file to ANSI DXS. Want to create the named boundaries every 25 feet. And so let's go down over here and select our alignment. Our start location is going to be 406 plus 00. zero. And then our end location is going to be A440 plus 00 again. Notice in the 2D view, you'll see the name boundaries being displayed. I'll left click through the prompts and they'll be created in the 3D model. Okay, so those have been placed every 25 feet along the corridor. And now if we go and use the cross section report tool, <clears throat> go to the home tab go to civil analysis, go down to cross-section report. And we have some options here. This tool is gonna to be looking for a named boundary group. So that set of named boundaries is in a named boundary group called State Route 43. Okay, now we have some options on how it can report on these features. So we can have it just look at all features in that corridor, that 3D model. We can have it look at just the top features of the corridor, we could have a look at the bottom, we could have a look at the alternate surface, or you can put some elements in a selection set. So it's very flexible, you could set up a, a graphical filter and put them in a selection and, and report on, on those things that way. I'm just gonna report on the top features of my corridor, so I'm gonna set that to top. I'm just gonna go through the prompts here. I'm just gonna left click, set that for top, and then go through. And then you'll see the default report that comes up is the cross-section gradebook report. And it just lists the stations. It lists the elevations and the offsets of my template points. So you got your existing edge of pavement here, your center line, and then the right edge of pavement there. That's fine, but we don't have cross slopes in this one. But if you go over to the cross-section gradebook report, it's going to change it a little bit. It's going to add the cross slopes to the report, and you're going to see the template point names as well. So we got the offsets, the elevations, as well as the cross slopes utilizing this report. There's a couple other ones here. You can take a look at the cross-section gray board, um, NE. This one gives you some more additional information. It shows you northern and eastern coordinates. And then cross-section gray book wide. And it looks like that. So these style sheets are delivered with the software. So if you're looking to use these today, you can use these. These are not customized in any way. They are delivered out of the box with the software, the standard install. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, so we looked at two different ways to uh, analyze the existing pavement cross slope, which is fine. That may not be enough. What if we want to create a combined report that lists the existing cross slopes and compares them against the design cross slopes, our theoretical super elevation or our design super elevation or our corrected um, cross slopes, okay? So I have another style sheet and a template that I've set up to report on the existing and the design cross slopes. So let's go take a look at this and how this functions. 
I'm gonna go back to my drawing here. Go over to my template library. So we saw in the first example, I was just using this these end condition template here to establish my existing pavement cross slopes. Now we're gonna take that same concept and we're gonna add in the proposed backbone components to that template. So essentially this is the same template as the other one. It just has the left and the right lane standard cross slope components attached, okay? So these are just set up at a standard width of 12 feet and 2%. Okay, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna apply the design super elevation or our theoretical super elevation, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna apply it to these 2% components so that they super elevate and correct themselves. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna swap out my template. Simply select my template drop handle change my template so that it's this one. Okay, so now the corridor changes and also the cross section changes. So now we got the existing pavement which is still shown, but now we got the proposed pavement shown as well. See, it looks a little weird because it hasn't been super elevated yet. Now, if you wanna do a lot of pavement cutting and removal, it's fine if you wanna leave it like this, but I think generally you're probably gonna to wanna to try and match the existing most cases. So if that's the case, if you want to try and match existing, you can certainly do that. But if you want to match existing, but maybe adjust the cross slope slightly so it closely follows a real super elevation, we can do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle on my super elevation reference file. We have that attached. So super elevation or the corrected slopes have already been created in a super elevation drawing. We have that attached. I go over to my corridors here and I'm going to assign that super elevation to my corridor. So let's go ahead and select assign the super elevation. See my super elevation section here. You can see my lanes there. It's already been set up. Let's go ahead and select the corridor. See my super elevation lanes, my template points that have been flagged for super elevation. I'll go ahead and click OK. That's going to go ahead and make that adjustment. So now, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we got our existing pavement cross slopes. We have our adjusted super elevation applied to the template there. Now I'm just going to come in here with my place horizontal temporary dimension again. Select my outside edge of pavement point here. Select the center line. My outside edge of pavement point, select my center line again, outside edge of pavement point. Now you can see the super elevation there is 8%. So that's probably our max super on this project for that particular curve. Okay, so we got our existing pavement cross slopes proposed or slope corrects or slopes here, our design slopes here. Now let's take a look at how we can generate a report on that information. Look over here and select my corridor once again. Go back to my handy tool, results report. Yeah, it's gonna do a little bit of corridor processing. It's gonna gather the template drops, the stations. Okay, so I have another style sheet that I set up here called existing and proposed two lane slopes. If I select that. Now you will see I have my stations listed over here on the left, just like we had with the other one. But now I have my existing left and right lanes. I have those slopes shown over here. And then I have my super elevation slopes from my slope corrected slope shown over here. Okay. So those should match. If we take a look at the uh, station here, we're still at 406.25. So Looks like those are correct. So it is reporting correctly on those on those slopes. Okay, so now at this point, once again, if we wanna get that into a spreadsheet for further analysis, we'll export it out and put it in a spreadsheet. Okay, 
So now if you want to modify these slopes or whatever, you can do that inside of a spreadsheet, and then you can import them back in. Okay, so you can always import a CSV file into the uh, super elevation file, as long as you format it properly. So that's how we can uh, get reports of existing slopes and our design slopes. Now, if you're wondering where these style sheets came from, these were customized by myself. I did not create these though. I got these, I found these um, in the from FDOT. FDOT has a bunch of style sheets and I found some that did basically the same thing. I just tweaked them a little bit so they'd work with my templates. So if you're looking to get these, um, I could post them on the Learn server when we post the recording for this video, I can include these style sheets. Um, they're probably only going to work with my template library though, so just a warning about that. If you don't have these and you're still kind of looking to try and get this type of information, if you just look at the template drop constraints report that we deliver out of the box, this one will give you the same type of information, it's just not as pretty. <laughs> Not as nice, I guess you could say. It's just in a slightly different format. You can see the center line point here, existing edge of pavement. It shows the slopes and the widths and the delta and all that kind of stuff, but it's not as nice as the one that that's laid out here, like a spreadsheet or a table. Okay. So that's we're done with that section. So let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint here. Make sure I'm on track. Okay. So. We've learned how to analyze our existing pavement cross slopes. Took a look at applying or analyzing the proposed slopes as well. That's needed. Take a let's talk about the overlay and stripping components now. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.